Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, packaging innovation stage here at Pack Expo and Cole Morgan's presentation on technology. We're going to have a kind of a fun time today in reviewing some interesting applications that Cole Morgan has done in the past. Uh, my name is Tom England. I'm director of market development within uh, Cole Morgan. And we're going to show you today how Cole Morgan explores technology, harnesses, and then applies it and in this case applies it to packaging equipment. So just a brief background on technology on Cole Morgan itself. Technology driven since 1916, we were founded uh, in 1916. We're a global motion control components and systems company. So our focus is on controls, drives, and all types of actuators, motors, linear actuators, uh, everything that would move something on a machine. And we design and manufacture in North America, Europe, and in Asia. So we're a global uh, entity, a $500 million business element, part of an $18 billion Danaher Corporation, a science and technology uh, company. So that's your fastest tour through uh, Cole Morgan uh, that you'll, you'll get. And you'll see lots of different types of applications. Today we're going to focus on the technology and how that leads into new and innovative capabilities within packaging. So, who can tell me what this is a picture of? Just sing out if you got a guess. Can't hear it. So it's something underwater. Did somebody say Titanic? Absolutely. So it's more than just Titanic. What you're actually looking at is motion technology in, uh, in application for the thrusters that are on the little Jason Jr. that explored, discovered and explored the Titanic. Cole Morgan did those uh, units and it was a very challenging application. You can imagine with the environment that we had to uh, use here. Let's take a look at, at the uh, unit uh, in actual application. You can see here what we did is we the small robot. What we do is this thruster technology we turn into products and then bring that into uh, actual applications in the packaging industry. In this application we worked at 12,500 feet below the surface of the uh, ocean, 2.3 miles. 380 atmospheres of pressure. That's a pretty tough application to, uh, to undergo. All the servo motors obviously were pressure compensated to be able to survive that. You're in salt water. You're in very uh, cold temperatures. We had integrated electronics in the motor. So these were integrated into the back of the thruster. So you had the motor and the electronics all together in a package. And saltwater uh, exposure. And at this depth, we're going to come up here in a second, you'll see zero degrees C temperature. It's actually uh, colder than freezing water. But at that pressure, water does not freeze. But very difficult environment. Also notice the uh, handling here for that little Jason Jr. You would think that something swimming around in the ocean would not require a whole lot of shock and vibration. Not with these operators. Uh, they were very difficult on the uh, unit. So the, all the motion control system had to handle not only those other elements, but high shock and vibration requirements. So we go from exploration of the technology to harnessing the technology and then applying it to machines. So we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, that next portion here. So Jason Jr. had to operate at 12,000 feet submergence. A lot of requirements on the, on the pressure compensation for the unit. Uh, 5,500 pounds per square inch. That's pretty high pressure. So imagine electronics that have to uh, survive that as well. So these were uh, special electronics that had to be used in the system. Integrated electronics, sealed against water ingress, of course. But the high shock and vibration was an added element that we discovered in the process of designing these. How many people uh, here are end users? Just show a hand, quick hands. A couple of end users. How many uh, people are OEM machinery manufacturers? 
Okay, and I assume the rest of you all are unemployed and looking for, uh, for work? Okay, great. Uh, we have our HR manager in the back uh, afterwards, uh, just see them. So one of the things that we found is in understanding the end user applications here, is what is the real requirement for the application? In this case, those operators were really tough on Jason Jr. They ran it into the ship, they went around bulkheads and everything else, and we found that this unit had to survive a lot more than what the spec called for. So that's one of the key elements in our development of products is we try to look at that in use and understand what the real requirement is. Smooth velocity to prevent cavitation of the pump, classic uh, motion control in velocity. So out of that, we developed a hygienic motor capability, uh, an IP69K motor, full stainless steel, no exposed fasteners. So this is an element where there's no bolts or screws or any other thing on the outside of the motor. It's a pure cylinder, and the only element that comes out of this is a single cable uh, on the unit. It's also breathable to reduce condensation. One of the elements that is not a critical requirement in the Jason Jr. is to have breathability. You've got an infinite heat sink and zero degree C at the bottom of the ocean, it's pretty good. When you're in a washdown environment, you have a very severe application of temperature variations. The temperature of the motor may be hot or it may be cold, and then it gets hit with a very hot and high pressure fluid. You have to be able to handle that in making the, uh, the unit last. Otherwise, the motor will fill up with water. You can do a great job of sealing it, but then the condensation will fill up with water and you'll have a failed, uh, very expensive stainless steel motor on your hands. No water ingress, minimal thermal derating. We have special designs to reduce the effect of the stainless housing because it's not as good a thermal transfer as aluminum. Laser etched nameplate so that you can meet the hygiene requirements. And basically focusing on trying to make the product last for a 10 year period with no maintenance whatsoever. It's a really hard application. I'd say this is one of the toughest environmental applications within packaging. So Cole Morgan exploring the technology, uh, harnessing it, and then bringing it into a real application. In this case, a meat and cheese interleaver where you're putting the paper in between the uh, products at high speed and cleaning time where we took it from uh, 20 minutes down to three minutes on the, uh, on the machine. More productivity, more uh, lasting for the uh, end user. So what's this? This is an easy, this is a giveaway, right? So this is the Segway, but few people know that the Segway uh, power transmission was designed and developed by Cole Morgan. So we designed a specific motor capability to go into the Segway uh, human transporter and it was a really challenging application because this combined a couple of key elements that are not typical of all applications. It required very high torque uh, and power density for the unit it included a speed range of 10,000 to one. So our single feedback device and our servo loops had to handle a range from slow crawl and smooth operation all the way up to 10,000 RPM in the unit. Highest level of efficiency. So we needed to cram as much torque and power into that motor as possible because we had a very small envelope to fit into. And then the 10,000 RPM max speed. You know, in electromagnetics, it's easy to get a lot of torque at low speeds, but it's hard to get it at low speed and high speed. Uh, and so that was a capability that we worked with on this. But the core element that made this so challenging is we had to do all of that at a very aggressive cost point. So this was a consumer device, right? And so we had to hit a specific cost point. One of the things that came out of that is a thing called a hemispherical redundant winding. Sounds kind of fancy, but basically it's the fact that we can have this motor be two motors in one with a limp home mode and you always have a redundancy in the drive or in the uh, motor. So this was a technology that we developed in uh, the Segway motors. The other part was multiple use of a single capability. So the overmolding technology that we developed for this motor had triple purpose. 
It had an electrical insulation purpose, a packaging density, making the motor smaller, and then a structural integrity as part of the bearing support for the motor. So multiple purposes driven into a single uh, element. And the last thing was a new winding technology. And this new winding technology allowed us to get to slot fills in the motor to get a lot more torque out of the unit. That was then used in our standard rotary AKM series that you find on packaging machines. So once again, technology explored, harnessed, and then applied into the applications. In this case, on the vertical form fill and seal machine. Yeah. Um, we, uh, uh, we do have a Segway motor up here. If you ever wondered how big this thing was, it's a small motor. Uh, and it's got the highest torque density and power density of anything that we make. And this technology then was used in the uh, standard AKM series that we apply on packaging. This next application, I'm going to introduce our Vice President of Engineering, John Boylan. And uh, he's going to talk about this very interesting uh, application and uh, maybe a little bit about his after hours uh, work in hobbies. Thank you, Tom. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I had the pleasure to work with the uh, students at Virginia Tech. This is a senior design project where they built an all electric motorcycle. They entered what is the TTX GP 75 class, which limits uh, the energy storage to 7.5 kilowatt hours. There's basically two classes that were running in these AMA races, 75 class and then the open class. 2013, we're, we're going to the open class, but in this year, uh, we did the 75 class. The whole trick to this was to take that amount of energy, do the required amount of warm-up, sighting laps, warm-up laps, the race itself, and then the, the, the uh, cool-down lap. Uh, you want to spend all the energy and you know, no more, no less. You want to get around uh, the track. So uh, we've got a video on this I'd like to show you. BT Bolt is an electric motorcycle team. What's different from this bike as far as all the other electric bikes is uh, the, the drivetrain we really have in there. Our drivetrain is from Cole Morgan and it's uh, a lot more sophisticated than some of the others that you'll see out there. The Bolt project has really ignited my desire for electric vehicles making something innovative. I guess inventing the future, if you will. We entered three races and we won our class in all three races. It was uh, very exciting. And one of the, so it's not only a, a place for us to work on technology, we, we uh, uh, produced our, lo the first low voltage motorcycle system using uh, an ACS 80 volt converter running at 600 amps. Uh, and we modified an AKM servo motor to match up with the uh, exact conditions for this particular application. So AKM comes in over 
Tom's <laughs> half a million permutations and combinations that are possible. Well, this one was a little outside of that, but we were able to, with uh, um, some co-engineering work with the students at Virginia Tech, uh, come up with an application-specific solution in, in the motor to match perfectly uh, for this motorcycle. Uh, they're running um, uh, at 60 kilowatts uh, peak, and uh, again, matching up with this uh, lithium-ion polymer battery that was uh, running at limited to 7.5 kilowatt hours. Um, tremendous fun exercise, uh, but what's most innovative and most uh, rewarding is, is working with the students in taking their ideas, it's their project, and we provided a sponsorship and supported them in a way where, where they, they got a lot of excitement uh, for the university, uh, so a lot of press, and, um, it, and for us it's a, a great recruiting ground as well because we get to learn the students and uh, they get to learn us.